four feet wide here in Dripping Springs. And uh, bec- I, then I started my market and all that, you know, and I've never really used it. Do you believe it? But it's all, <laughs> it's all set up, and we're going to do it now this year. If I don't get it right away, we're going to do it at least for a fall garden. But I may just roll with it now because in Texas you can do it anytime, right? It doesn't matter. It does get a little hot here. But, um, yeah, you're welcome to come over, uh, contact me, and see how we set it up. And also we're going to put some uh, some videos on on, uh, on our website so you can watch as well. Now, Don, uh, uh, the way you helped me set up was with gravel, right? Yes. So there's yes. no dirt whatsoever. No, no, none whatsoever. My two farms were with gravel, but I built other kinds where you just have a tube with water flowing through it continuously. A four-inch tube with a hole in the top to put your plant with a little sponge around hanging into the water, and the water moves by continuously. Oh. That works as well. Plants love moving water because you get a lot of oxygen in the water. And would you, uh, would you have this water moving, like, constantly or yeah. just every yeah. now and then? No, I have it moving continuously past the roots. That's one way. And another way is to have a uh, trays where the water stays in and then you change it every so many minutes. Yeah, Uh that's another kind Mm -hmm. because it needs to get new oxygen to the plants. Now, the way he set uh, myself up, folks, is is it's a bed, but it it, um, slants, right? And Uh and we have lots of gravel. Uh, It's a little like little pea gravel. Hmm? Uh And then... And then the we have a tank that I mix with rainwater and ocean water to a specific total right. total dissolved solids right down for about fifteen hundred parts right. per million, and then you can just uh, turn on a crank, and it just automatically fills up the bed, and which the roots are down in the in the gravel, huh, Don Jansen? That's right. That's and then, all they need. And then I would only have to um, get get them wet a couple times a day. Once a day. Once a day. Yeah, that's all. Once a day, and the, and the gravel holds moisture. The sand piles hold moisture very well. So oh, holds, I see. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then you use the same, you pump, you drain it back. Then you drain it back, because it's on a slant, folks, so it drains back out to a little barrel, and we have yeah. a float pump, and the float pump, when it gets full, it puts it back into the big barrel. So it's all done with just one little pump. Very, oh. very small pump. Correct. And then... You can use the same. Uh, people keep, because uh, the fertilizer companies have hoodwinked farmers into believing, oh, you need 50 pounds on acre this year. You're going to need 80 pounds next year. They keep dumping it on our soil. And if you ever grow hydroponically, you find out that I actually lost very little nutrition out of the ocean water. The water evaporated, and my concentration of nutrition got stronger daily. And I'd have to add fresh water in the middle of the month. No kidding. Yeah, I you'd, never added you, fertilizer ever after you, the first you, dose. You'd actually act to add, add more water because I, no, that's, that's amazing. Because those little roots don't eat that much. We keep thinking like our obese Americans eat. That's what we were thinking of. Uh-huh. And, of course, the fertilizer company loves to say a lot of fertilizer, so they're never going to tell you that, hey, the plants don't eat much. Mm-hmm. So they dump a lot on there, and that's why we have toxic lakes to the rivers because that runoff is terrible. It's way mm-hmm. too much, mm-hmm. uh, way too excessive. Mm-hmm. Now, and, and and I found out from Don Jansen that the dirt doesn't do anything. The dirt is just a medium like the rocks. What yeah. the plants need are nutrients, right? Right. Uh-huh. If the if the if the soil has nutrition in it, you're lucky. But it's been leached for so many million years in the United States and most countries in the world now that it's all in the ocean. It's out of the soil. They put in three and four and five, maybe ten elements, but that's a long ways from 90 Uh in the ocean. So we're always underfed. Most food is empty, basically. So, So the ocean has 90 elements. If you dilute ocean water, then you can... You can get that that beautiful spectrum of minerals introduced yeah. to the plants, and yeah. then uh, now now those, those plants don't uptake everything because they're all uh, designed to only uptake a certain right. amount. Correct. Right. Yeah. Tomatoes pick up fifty six. Sweet potatoes pick up sixty nine. Uh, basically, around there, sixty nine, sixty eight, sixty five. 
uh, tomatoes 56, 55, 57. They stay right in that area and they continually do it. And all tomatoes do. And however, I found out that <clears throat> wheatgrass picks it all up. Grasses pick up all the elements and that is phenomenal. I just, that's why, really, I've quit growing vegetables and grow mainly wheatgrass anymore. <laughs> and, then, you know, that's one of the most amazing things. When did you find that out, that grass will take up every mineral that you introduce to it? Well, I was, um, I, I set a farm up at the University, Gulf Coast University, <clears throat> asked me to set up a test plant there. So I set up a, a four-bed garden on their facility by the power plant. And I also grew some, I grew tomatoes in competition with their regular fertilizer. And at the end, our fertilizer was superior in every way. Our plants were hardier. We put way more pounds on. The tomatoes lasted way longer. Everything was better in every aspect. So, but when I was finished, I had sent some of the tomatoes, and I had put basil as a command companion plant between the tomatoes. And I also had grass growing on the side, not on the beds, but on my own. So I took those good tomatoes and my wheatgrass and checked the enzymes in the uh, uh, lab close by here in Gainesville. <clears throat> and it came back that the, enzyme, the essential amino acids of wheatgrass were five times higher than my ocean-grown tomatoes, hmm. all 21. Hmm. And I thought, why am I knocking myself out for three months to draw, grow a tomato when wheatgrass I can clip every 10 days and I have a food that has five times more amino acids. It picks up all the elements. I had that tested, and sure enough, it took all of them. Uh, it's such a superior plant when you feed it ocean water that it's not worth growing other food. <laughs> yeah, but then you got to eat grass your whole life, though. That could get boring. Well, the cattle don't seem to mind it, so yeah. I figured I'd join them. <laughs> The buffalo. <laughs> yeah, the buffalo. Uh, Don Jansen's with us. If you'd like to join us, 888-1-NET-6. 888-1-NET-6 is the telephone number on one radio network. I, I just think it's amazing that with all the species on the planet, that grass, which is, I, I would assume, one of the more plentiful species on the planet, in God's infinite wisdom, will uptake, yeah. will uptake every mineral that you introduce to it. It's just so mind-boggling. And now I understand why the animals don't have desserts and uh, uh -huh. appetizers and mm -hmm. a steak every day. And mm -hmm. They just graze all day long, and they're healthy, and they're hearty, and they're fat, especially if they get the elements put on their grass. Oh, my goodness, they go crazy. Oh, you mean if you... And, and well, if I, if I spread ocean water on the grass that they're eating, they don't stop. They stand right there and graze that grass and leave all the rest of it go. Because they can taste they got a nutrition piece of grass here. And and you've done that. Uh, did you do some work with some buffalo herds? Yes, I did that with buffalo. The buffalo never wanted to eat along roads. Right. So I took ocean water and I put it along the roads, and the buffalo wouldn't quit. They came to the road, and they laid down, and they ate on that. And they all summer that summer, they stayed by the road. And they hate people and cars and stuff, so they usually hit. And this summer, that summer, they grazed on that edge just like lawnmowers. <laughs> it was incredible. It was so different. I knew that I had something there. Well, animals know. They, they, yeah. they, they know uh, intuitively uh, what's in the grass. I mean, I watch my dog sometime, Bria, a golden retriever, who you'll probably hear bark during this broadcast. She's right outside. And she'll just, uh, she'll, as you know, folks, you, if you have animals, she'll just pick around and smell and walk around, and she'll know exactly what to, what to eat. Some stuff, yep. yeah, she turns up her nose, and all of a sudden she goes, oh, yeah, this is good. They, they just know, man. You know, I, they just know. Well, they eat out of my trays if I lay them down. Sometimes I have a pad. I'm finished with it, and it has some grass on it. They come over, and the cats and the dog, uh -huh. they will eat that grass right off the top, pull mm -hmm. it off the top and mm -hmm. chew it. Now, folks listening now, and it's, it's easy to get. You can get gallons of ocean water, and not very expensive.